Hey, it's the middle of March, and I've got Garth Jensen here in the office. We want to talk about the Colorado Mule Deer Draw and Outlook for 2021. I know Garth has been flooded with calls coming in from Hunt and Fool members asking about the Mule Deer Draw. I've got all these points. I want to go this year. Everyone told me I need to go this year. Yeah. Where should I go? What should I do? And it's a little bit overwhelming. Garth single-handedly is going to kill the odds in most of these second and third season units. No, I am most definitely not. They killed themselves. <laughs> no, it is a funny state where it is preference-based. Usually we say book your hunt, plan your hunt on the year you want to go because you will know how many points it's going to take roughly to draw the tag you want. This year kicks off a little bit of a mess for that. Yeah. Uh, process because they have changed the season dates. Everything is rolled back, and 2021 now becomes the latest season dates for the next five-year structure. They left a window open in their last commission meeting because they discussed changing. They they introduced three different options to change these season dates. Yep. Because in all their wisdom, in the last commission meeting when they signed this five-year season structure in the I don't know if you call it law, but they passed the season structure. Um, they really didn't focus on deer that much. They just kind of looked at the elk and they said, oh, well, because the first season now happens this point and we want longer breaks in between elk seasons, well, they have combined seasons. So if you spread that number out, yeah, it's, it's not that big a deal if you're hunting elk from, you know, the end, the last week of October for a second season versus the first week of November. Same thing. Not that big a deal, right? Yep. But... When you start to take the second season and push it back into the first week in no or first week in November for deer, that starts to be a little bit of a problem. And then when you start to push the third season back even later, because they issue so many tags on the third season, it's definitely going to impact the amount. I mean, if you just look at how Colorado has always ran it, they've always been very, what would I say, restrictive with the amount of tags they've issued during the fourth season is kind yep. of protect that older mature buck population because they're more vulnerable at that point. It's like they just threw their hands in the air and said, you know what, whatever. Go ahead. Let's do it. Let's run it. Let's run their Montana model because Montana <laughs> has been smoking some great bucks and they don't have CWD in Montana which they do, but <laughs> they think that this is going to cure that. So I don't know. Anyways, it, it's created a little bit of a mess, and we have what we have now. If they continue with this season structure moving forward, yeah, mature bucks are going to be tougher to come by. And that's where we end up today is people have heard you say that or heard others say that, and they say, oh, this is the year. I want to burn my points. I want to go this year. Yeah. What's the best hunt I can get into? That's the big question. Yeah. Because it used to be everybody wanted that four season date so they could have a chance at a true rut hunt with snow everywhere. Yeah. And have those late dates where the third season was hit and miss. Sometimes you had snow, sometimes you didn't. Sometimes the rut was good, sometimes it was hot and dry and it wasn't. Yeah. And now where everything is back, you're talking your second rifle doesn't start till October 30th and runs through November 7th. That's now like the old third season in my mind or close to it. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I've seen third season dates in the past. Now, granted, it was some of the earlier third seasons that started in October and ran into November. Yep. Same dates. So you've almost traded spots and now third season dates for 2021 appear like a fourth season, a fourth yeah. rifle. So the third season, is that going to be the cream of the crop for this year? I mean, we're drawing a wide brush here across western yeah. Colorado. Is the Are those the season dates you want? Well, it's tricky, uh, honestly, because um, if you get some nasty weather that comes in there and really hits that force or some of them areas that are heavy, you know, at least dependent on migratory deer moving out of some of that high country. Because here's the thing in Colorado. Um it's dominant with summer, you know, open high country basins and summer range and early fall. And, and once they start moving out of that country, it concentrates them more because there's not as much winter range mm -hmm. in, in most, at least of most of the Western slope. So what you have is if you do get one of those perfect storms that come in and start moving those deer out of the high elevations and concentrates them down in some of that lower, 
you know, more sage step type of vegetation and, and aspen stands, they're just more vulnerable. They don't have the cover. They don't, you know, they don't have escapability like they would have up in some yeah. of that timber country. So if you get that during that third season and you th- have 300 hunters running out into this area that, w- you know, at this time of year used to have like, I don't know, let's say 50, 30. Mm-hmm. Now all of a sudden it's like, boom, 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 shoot them up. Shoot them up. You know, and, and it's hard to say how those deer are going to react because inevitably they're going to get the picture. It just might be a little late. And I, I just, I've just seen deer to where once they get that scent in their nose, man, you got to yeah, hope not. those does smarten up yeah. a little bit because the, <laughs> the bucks ain't. They're not. So explain to me how the quota is distributed across most of these units because i think that's important to realize when you're applying for a hunt in colorado with how many other people could potentially be in the field that have tags for deer as well yeah. or elk hunters in the field as well as well like if it's an over-the-counter unlimited second or third rifle for elk there could be a lot of other people yeah. in the field so how do they break the deer up as far as second and third versus fourth like percentage wise is it i mean it's super limited on the fourth right yeah and and i wouldn't even say they have a uh an average percentage i mean just percentage wise there's far fewer tags in four season there always has been but you can take some units that they might they might go across the board and say you know 400 for second 250 for third or 300 for third and then drop all the way off to like 25 for Mm -hmm. fourth there's others that can have similar second and third numbers and then drop to 75 or 100 fourth. Gotcha. So it, in my opinion, I think it really does boil down to how vulnerable they feel like those animals are going to be by the time the fourth season hits. Mm-hmm. It seems like the more vulnerable that the biologists feel that those animals are going to be, they err on the side of caution and issue fewer tags. But there's gotcha. always more second season tags than there is third there's 99% of the time fewer fourth season tags than there is third, except in a couple of extreme cases like 44, where basically it's the same amount of tags for third and fourth. Gotcha. But that could be dictated by accessible land on some of those later sure. season hunts with public, private. Yeah. I mean, in, in my opinion, like you said, these, these deer are high. They're living in high alpine basins, a lot of the western slope. Then they move down. When they're in that middle country, which they're going to be just before the second rifle or during the second rifle, that's when it's tough, right? They come into that oak, uh, scrubby, aspen, kind of in the middle ground, and then they're headed down. But they could potentially be all the way down by third season dates this year. Yeah, I I mean, a a prime example of what you're describing is is really in that Gunnison Basin area because they kind of took a model, they kind of took it last year and they exaggerated a little bit more and they said, you know what, we're gonna take the base model of what we feel like the harvest percentages are when it comes to second versus third. Mm -hmm. We still think there's an overabundance of mature bucks on the landscape. So we wanna issue tags for that, but we don't wanna get carried away. So what they did is they cut a portion of tags in third season when they're gonna be a little more vulnerable but then they added more tags than they cut from third into the second, knowing full well that they were going to have a lower harvest success rate and probably end up with the same amount of bucks being harvested overall. But they knew they could increase the tag numbers and give more mm-hmm. opportunity during the second because they know that's the hardest time to kill a buck. I mean, yeah. the hardest time to kill an old mature buck when he's not in the open basins, when he's not vulnerable to people glassing him up, he's pulled into some heavy cover. He's just laying and waiting for the rut to take place. He's not really checking doge yet because he knows it's too early. So he's just in cover 90% of the time during the day. It's just hard. Hmm. That creates a a little bit of a what's going to happen this year. And I think it's important to know, like in the magazine and when you're applying, we do not have tag numbers that are set for this year. Right. We only have sheep and goat tag numbers that are officially set. The moose, elk, deer, antelope, those are not set until the first commission meeting in May. Right. So we are applying a little bit on a guess. Right. Do you see drastic decreases in tags coming up? or it, What guys are trying to do is they're looking at the points they have. They're trying to pick a hunt that they think they could draw that'll 
give them a buffer, you know, maybe go a few points above what it took in the past few years to draw that tag because yeah. people are going to jump in. But how do I know, what if the tag numbers are adjusted substantially? Is yeah. that going to happen? Well, it, it could. And when I say it could, I mean, the biologists in Colorado are not oblivious to this, you know, the cause and effect. They know exactly that there's going to be more mature bucks on the landscape that are vulnerable during this third season versus last year's third season. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they know this. So if they get into that situation where they come and present and they talk to the commission, they could go in and say, you know what, we might want to back off just a little bit on the number of permits that we want to issue in third. I think they'll probably try to you know, correct that by adding more tags to second and or muzzleloader or things like that. But honestly, I'm not a biologist. I'm not in their mind. I don't know what they're going to do. But we've seen precedents for that in the past, them trying to correct that. So if their overall goal is indeed is to kind of reduce the number of bucks on the landscape that are four year old, four year old and older, because those are chronic carriers of chronic wasting. <laughs> or carriers of chronic wasting, it just seems like that the goal is to take those bucks off the landscape. Mm -hmm. So I don't know why you would have a goal of that nature and then reduce the number of permits in a prime time to reduce those bucks and take them off the landscape. So it would almost be a contradiction, in my opinion, to do that. But like I say, it just, it kind of depends. They, they could do it. They could. So we are applying not knowing exactly the tag numbers and we're applying not knowing how many people are going to jump in with more points than you that have been either sitting out waiting for late dates like this year mm -hmm. or just building points forever and now they decide to hunt this year. There's a lot of factors that could play into that. But how come so many applicants this year, Garth, it seems like everyone has between 10 and 15 deer points and they're ready to use them and they're ready to go this year? Well, I, I wouldn't... Is that there's too broad of no, a swath there's there's <laughs> always been a number of applicants with 10 to 15 points. The difference is is they always had other I mean if you have 10 to 15 points in Colorado, you've probably got other states in your portfolio. Sure. So what happened in the past I just I I think the reason we didn't see such a surge of applicants with that number of points is because they probably had something else they were eyeballing, you know. And and there wasn't a drastic change. It was like, well, you know, it's just Colorado as it is you know we just if I don't get it this year you know I can look forward to getting something next year well now because of these season dates going so far back and the risk of reducing the amount of mature bucks on the landscape I mean let's face it you don't build 10 to 15 points up to go shoot a two point no. I mean you're building those points specifically to have a chance at a better age class buck that's why you have built points over the years so it's created a little bit of a panic and now that's why we're seeing such a surge of applicants that are looking to dump those points now. It's not because they weren't out there, but it's just because now Colorado is their primary focus instead of those other states. And now they're pushing those other states off and saying, well, listen, I got eight points in Wyoming. What the hell? Doesn't, yeah. I mean, eight points is eight points. I Let's can do something to... next year. Let's go to Colorado. So we're, we sit on the fence of we are going to have an enormous amount of point creep on most of these second, third, and fourth season rifle dates for deer just because people are going to jump out and try to get a tag this year. Yeah. And looking at the point table total, I mean, there's still a non-resident hanging on with 31 deer points. It, if those aren't gone this year, he's got <laughs> other options. Like, deer is not important to him. No. He just wants to remain the top guy. But yeah, we've got guys with points all the way down the list from 31. You know, you see it start to see a big jump up at that 25 point level, um, all the way down to 14. I mean, you have hundreds of non-resident applicants alone at each point level. Yeah. So, yes, if you are applying for a hunt in Colorado this year, would it be safe to say don't count on drawing for sure unless you are substantially above the point level that it took in years past? Yeah, and, and and substantial is dependent honestly on the numbers of tags being issued. Yep. I mean we've seen we've seen hunts with one or two tags, you know, that only for non residents jump ten points in a year. 
because it only takes a couple guys to blow the lid off to that blow thing. Blow it off. Yep. So when you start looking down through that and you're researching through our magazine, pay attention to the numbers of non-resident permits that were allocated last year, because that's gonna those ones, in my opinion, are more vulnerable to have an exponential increase. And that makes sense. You know, the one thing that I I, I look at when I pay attention to some of these point creeps is, you know, I, I've talked to some people and they think, well, they're going to dump all their points this year. And then next year, it'll probably sell off a little bit. Well, maybe. Because here's the thing. If it goes from 12 points for a hunt to 16 points for a hunt, well, guess what? Nobody with 13, 14, or 15 drew that tag. Yep. And they're still going to go in next year. Because it only rolls back one day earlier next year. Exactly. So it's not bad dates. <laughs> so it might slough off, but I don't think it's going to slough off that much, if that at all. Was. Because now, what is so what what's so troubling to me is right now you could look across the state and say honestly, like there's most of the units in the state have similar potential. There's only maybe twenty. I mean, and I'm just taking a stab at it, but maybe twenty units across the state where you could legitimately say. Yes, this area has substantially better potential for a trophy buck than these other units that are spread out. Sure. But you could almost lump all those other units together. The problem is, is what's going to happen is out of those other units that people are dumping points on fourth season tags and third season tags that are taking anywhere from three to ten points, these are all the other units. So what happens if they're going there thinking, well, I got a shot at a 170, 180 buck, possibly on a third or fourth season. But now, because they issue so many tags on these third seasons and second season hunts on the other units that they're not managing for older age class bucks, Mm -hmm. that just took the potential from 170 to 180, possibly down to 130 to 150. Mm -hmm. So how many of those guys are apt to put in and burn 10 points on a hunt where they know full well, man, I might get lucky and see a 150 buck. Yeah. Not many. So yeah. it's going to pin all those guys into the same units or into kind of a, a, a point building phase where you're just not going to see the applicants for some of these other units that you would have in the past. It's still going to, there's still enough people out there. They're going to dump points on it. But now everyone with like 15 to 25 points is going to be putting in for those like 10 to 15 units that still have a chance at a big buck. It's creating a a huge issue going forward because me, if I say, oh, I don't want to play the game this year, this, the points are going to be out of control. I don't want to do it. I'll wait a couple years until things calm down. The other problem, like you said, is we are targeting these deer during prime conditions, and you could see that age class fall off so much that you may not want to go in that unit that you thought about going in. Yeah. Or the potential may not be there three, four, five years from now or when the cycle resets. Like, it could be not the beginning of the end for Colorado deer, but it's not looking good for trophies across the state it's not the early 2000s anymore yeah like the populations are driven by females right i I don't think they're going across the board and issuing a bunch of doe tags right but we're gonna find out how many people were actually putting in for colorado to try and find an older age class buck yeah because that's what's going to be hurting in the grand scheme of things is the older age class on the landscape and if they're not there We'll have to see how many people continue to put money into their system. Right. No, it is a, an expensive one to consider applying in. Now you have to buy that qualifying small game license just to apply. You don't have to front the license fee anymore, which is nice, but that also created a huge influx of applicants at low point levels. Yeah. They're vying for those two, three, four point units. So it has created a little bit of a mess. I know I always say I want to get to Colorado as often as I can. You always get to Colorado as often as you can because there's always a chance in yeah. any of those units. Now, your strategy this year, you only lose your preference points if you draw your first choice. Are there still going to be some decent second choice options where you could still keep your points, but it does get you into Colorado, maybe second season where the dates are so late? Yeah. Or do you think a lot of those second season, second choice tags are going to go 
in the first choice draw this year? I, I think there's going to be, well, I don't know. It's a combination because I think there's a lot of guys that probably burned their points last year, you know, because they didn't want to deal with this rat race we're in right now, mm -hmm. which honestly last year, if you look at it, as far as point wise, some of these top areas stalled out. They didn't increase in points, which that just shows you how many people were, were waiting. waiting. <laughs> so that being said, the guys that went in there and burned their points, they're probably looking at it like, hey, I got nothing to lose. I'm just going to put in for that you know, hunt first choice. I know it went second choice last year, or there might have been five leftover tags. I'm just going to get it so I don't chance it because I want to be over there this year during go. those dates. So... I think there's still going to be some. I think second season is the one that, you, like you said, will you'll see those second choice tags in. But there's no guarantee now. I mean, it's... Can't predict anything this year. No. <laughs> now, if, if you do apply and you draw, there is still the option to turn your tag back 30 days before the season. Yeah. And get your points reinstated to the point level you had. You don't gain a point for that year. Yeah. So it doesn't hurt you to try to apply and and get a tag, I realize you may not want to ask for time off yet for those season dates until you see if you actually draw after tag numbers shake out in May and we get results the first part of June. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it, it's worth it to be over there just for that chance. It's just, it, it Colorado is what it is. Like, you have a great opportunity to go and hunt an area that has, you know, plenty of deer. I mean, there's deer out there. Mm -hmm. There's always a chance for a big buck to turn up at any time. Just it's getting harder and harder to turn it up. I mean, I talked to a guy this year and I said the, the difference between now and say early 2000s is if you're hunting those later season day, second or third, it's a timing issue. I mean, honestly, you're, this isn't a spot that you've scouted. This isn't, you didn't see this buck in the summer over here and now you're hunting him during November. You're just hunting locations. That boils down to right place, right time. Mm -hmm. There might be 50 bucks on that in that unit that would meet your potential. Okay, you've got 50 different places to be at the right time. That's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe, <laughs> depending on the odds. But now all of a sudden you say there's only 12 bucks in that unit that meet the criteria you're looking for. And you got to find one of those 12 locations every day that that buck's going to be at at the right time when you have an opportunity to shoot him. You're just cutting your chances down of being in the right place at the right time. For sure. Ugh, creates a mess. I know I want to go. I've got a few points, and I'm trying to figure out where I can be safe. But I'm looking at one-point units <laughs> saying, okay, if it jumps five or six points, I might still be able to grab it. Uh, but, yeah, I, you don't even want to look at the point level you have because they're going to increase substantially. Oh, yeah. Not even the same game. Yeah. If you could have one tag this year, Garth, you've got 20 points. What, where do you want to be? What part of the state does Garth Jensen want to be in this year, if he could get a tag? Um, so you're saying I don't have enough points to choose my unit then? Not enough points to choose your unit. But I've got 20 to you work got with. 20. i got 20. That's not So the... you can choose your unit, but you're not going to get the season maybe you want. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, if I go off of just what I've what I've seen, what I'm looking at, um, there's not a magic bullet because again, it is going to be right place, right time. Mm -hmm. But I just look back at areas that have been like at least managed to the point to where it's a little more conservative mm -hmm. than opportunity wise on tag numbers. On tag numbers, um, man, if if I thought there was a chance that I could, you know, possibly get into that basin, I just like the Gunnison Basin. I like it because it's got history. They've had some great bucks pulled out of there. There's enough country where you can find a buck back in the little hidey hole that someone's not found. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, I, I just like that opportunity that's in, that's in front of you there. And you don't get all the private property hoopla you get with your 44s and, and, yeah. and areas like that. And they're still producing big bucks out of that area. I know there's still some in there. So, I mean, personally, that's where I would go because I like that environment. I like that area. I like the terrain. I just I just think it's a, it's a good opportunity. But that's probably not going to be where the biggest buck comes from. But at the same time, 
when we went to hell. Someone's yeah. always going to kill a bigger buck. Someone's going to kill a bigger one. Yeah. You just want to be there. Yeah. With the best tag you can get. Yep. Sounds good. Well, apply by April 6th. That is the deadline to apply. You must pick the unit, pick the season, and put in for that. You can modify your application now pretty easy through mm -hmm. their online system. So if you put in, do some more research, and want to change your application, it's just a few clicks in your CPW account and no big deal. So don't forget to apply. Buy the license, $9 application fee. They don't charge you the license fee until you are successful in the draw. Yeah, it's a good deal. Any other tips for a Colorado deer guy? Factor in the factor in the over the counter elk hunters when oh, you look man. at your units. <laughs> people are always blindsided by that. They're like, you won't believe how many people uh, were over here. <laughs> yeah, look at your access points, and if you have the ability to get back away from, say, overall four wheeler trails and roads and things like that in the unit you're selecting. And you have the ability to get away look at that too because honestly like it's still a pain in the butt to hike an elk out of anywhere mm -hmm. unless you got stock so they're less likely to go too far back in for an elk than they are a deer but man if there's a unit that has a limited number of elk tags that's always a bonus always better oh yeah <laughs> you might find a camping spot yeah no kidding <laughs> sounds good thanks for listening today check out garth has some new videos on our youtube channel called mastering the draw where he breaks down some more details about the draw, the um, fees, the application, how the draw actually works. And we've got new ones coming out every week. So check that out on our YouTube channel. Like and subscribe. See ya.